100 pieces from 50 African and diaspora artists are on display at Porto's Galleria Municipal Almeida Garrett, with the show's title taken from a diptych by Kenyan artist Wangechi Mutu. I thought it was so interesting because you love me, you love me not. You could say the same thing probably about uh, two countries like maybe France and Algeria. So it's, uh, it's a very long history, very passionate and very hurtful at the same time. Which is really the case, I mean, the war, the independence war in Angola lasted from 19, the, the, the late 1950s until 1975. So it was really the battle of, of, of several generations. Uh, and of course it, had, it has left scars. Um, the way the relationship between Angola and Portugal has sort of inverted him, itself, maybe in the specific environment of, of, of a crisis conjecture for, for Europe and especially that has been particularly hard on Portugal. And that has sort of created some very new phenomena, such as Angolan companies going and invest in Portugal. Brought up in Belgium and France, Sindika started collecting traditional African art when he was 15 years old, a hobby which was nurtured by his self-made millionaire father, Augustin Docolo, who owned a collection of 19th century African art. While visiting a London gallery to see a show by Cameroonian artist Pascal Martin Tayou, whose work he collects, Sindika reflects on how the contemporary art scene has evolved on the African continent. I think now in certain countries and certain, certain art areas of our continent, you're starting to have an art market that is fueled by collectors, uh, private institutions. Uh, it's the case of South Africa. South Africa is, is by far, in my opinion, um, at, at the forefront of, of, uh, of uh, the art world for our continent. In the case of Angola, for instance, you start to have this uh, demand that is fueled by individuals and collectors and also institutions, museums. And the good thing is that it enables artists from the younger generation to build their career from the inside out. The Sindika Dokola Foundation, which he created with Angolan artist and curator Fernando Alvim in 2006, currently holds more than 5,000 artworks featuring 140 artists from 28 African countries. I was very early on um, confronted with moral and political questions such as, well, how important it is, is it to have the collection based in Africa. What is my responsibility as far as exposing the African public to its own creation? What is my responsibility in terms of promoting young artists and then from there pass on to a much more international uh, platform? And that just within the scope of a collection was not possible. I needed to create like a, a a machine around it, which was the foundation. Sindika plans to open a museum of contemporary art in Angola's capital city, Luanda, in the next five to ten years, which he hopes will expose African audiences to their own artists and reflect the contemporary reality of the African continent. We're throwing ourselves in a new millennium, in a new century. We've had very consistent growth, economic growth in Africa for the past decade or so, and this has changed uh, the social structures of, of our societies and our countries and, and all this sort of uh, turns necessary a sort of a reflection of what is our trajectory, where do we come from, what are our values and, and where do we want to project ourselves, how do we see ourselves in the future. And that debate needs to be nourished internally in all the, um, in all the African continent and I think um, who else better than the artists can, can do that. Thank <laughs> you.